So I want to look at doing some step attenuator modules that uh, I can use inside power amplifiers to act as my volume control. Um, so that's really what we're going to be doing here. But just as some background, uh, this was my original step attenuator volume control. You know, after we moved away from variable resistors and the like, uh, I built this unit. And I used this in my system for, for a, a long time. Uh, and it works, works very well. And I still use it, obviously, for a... Uh, test on the bench nowadays but this is a 24 position switch good quality switch and then we've got some precision resistors inside here uh, and uh, just uh, a left and right in on the rear panel there so very simple unit and obviously manual control so that was a bit of a, a limitation uh, uh, for hi-fi use and uh, also the 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 attenuation is done inside this unit, so it's not done at the power amplifiers where I, where I really want to be doing that. Um, so that was my first step attenuator, volume control. So the lack of remote control was a bit of a headache at times, and so uh, after a while I came up with this unit here, and this has got a microcontroller in it here, and we've got these uh, modules here, and these are actually the attenuator modules uh, and uh, we've got a, just a digital control line coming in there from, from this controller unit. And these then I can place at my power amplifiers. So my attenuation is, is done just at the right place. And these are, uh, these are using uh, some uh, precision relays and precision resistors to give me my attenuation steps in there. Uh, so I still use this today. This is, this is what I'm using right now. Uh, and this gives me remote control. You can see the the uh, LED there. Um, we'll power it up in a second. Um, on the rear, uh, we've got uh, our left and right control. So this is just uh, nine pin D, and I just I'm just using that you know standard RS two three two cable. Um, and then it's an Arduino Uno that's in here that's uh, doing the control, and I can see the date two thousand fourteen. Um, Let's just power it up and we'll see see what's happening here. So as we power up there, we can see it's 2016 there, so I must have updated it uh, then. Uh, and we've got a, a 2x16 LCD there, uh, and I can vary my attenuation using the knob on the front or via the remote control. So that all works just fine. Uh, quite happy with that. Performs very well. Uh, and gets me over the lack of remote control problem. Uh, however, what I really want to do is, as opposed to having these external modules, um, a, I want to be able to just uh, take this control line and plug that into the back of power amplifiers and then have some modules that I can use uh, inside power amps uh, to do a similar thing here. So let's go and look at what the plan is there. So we're going to look at this uh, using this device here um, and this, this device is used in a whole bunch of integrated amplifiers and uh, sort of pro audio gear um, and so I know it I know it performs well uh, and uh, so might be a good good choice for what we're looking to do here. Uh, one of the other advantages of using a device like this is that we've got a huge range you know I had, I had limited range with my step attenuators and really attenuators uh, and uh, so this is going to give us a lot more range uh, and all the distortion numbers and everything seem quite good according to this. So of course we can't just pick up one of these devices and make some measurements on it or start to test it or anything like that. You know we have to have the associated circuitry and uh, basically do a board to to uh, try the thing out. Um, so that's what we're doing here. I've got some circuitry here to do this. Um, and so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have balanced and unbalanced uh, inputs to this little module and then there's some op amp circuitry here before we before we, we go into the actual uh, step attenuator device so i'm using the left and right channels so i'm using them for balanced and unbalanced uh, and it'll be a single device per channel so there'll be two two of these a module in each power amplifier um, and then i can select uh, whether it's balanced or unbalanced, I've got a relay shown here to do this. Whether I use that or not, we'll, we'll decide later. And then some power supply stuff. 
So looking at the, the board layout here then, uh, a bunch of symbols missing on this, but uh, you can see the footprints of what we're doing here. Um, so we've got our inputs here, uh, the op amps and a bunch of resistors and stuff, and then the step attenuator device here. Uh, serial data comes in here, and our power supplies come in and some of these other headers, and then our signal to our power amplifiers going off here. So as I say, the intention is to uh, have these modules just as a building block and then uh, you know they can be used inside power amplifiers and we just uh, you know insert this in the signal path and have external control of our volume uh, so that's the plan I need to go and get these boards made now and uh, see where we go from there so I've had these boards back for uh, quite a while and uh, it's just taken me a while to get around to uh, starting to use them um, so this one here, I've got the attenuator device installed, um, and that's really all I've got installed. I've just got that guy there, and the power supplies are on it. Uh, and we're just going to do some basic, uh, we're going to try some basic communication on this thing to see that we're going in the right direction. Uh, so I've got a test signal coming in on this white line here, and then we're uh, talking to the device over serial bus, and I've got an Arduino Nano here. Uh, set up to do that and I've got some code running here where I switch between the full attenuation state and the through path and uh, if I probe here I've just got a one second delay where the signal's off and on one second each time so I'm toggling between these two levels um, so that's good that tells me we're talking to this device okay and uh, you know the basic functionality is there uh, I'm going to go and change my code quickly so that we uh, actually just ramp up and down this signal and that will give me the sort of code I need then to, to actually vary our attenuation. Uh, I know, at least I'll know that stuff's working before we go any further. So let me just do that and then we'll come back and probe again. Right, so I changed my code there so that we're ramping the output of this thing up and down. We can see that there quite happily on the scope. Uh, so that, yeah, that just gives me confidence. I know you know, I've got all the right commands and uh, a, a, you know the basic steps to start talking to this thing and getting it to do what I want. So that's all fine. Uh, so I think the next thing we'll do is we'll get the sort of dedicated power supplies on this board. Um, we really want some quiet power supplies for this guy, and then we'll. Uh, look at making some audio measurements on it, you know, measure the noise floor and distortion, make sure we're happy with that uh, before we move on. So let me go and do some further assembly. Right, so we've got our power supply circuitry installed here and we're driving from uh, this little transformer we can see. Uh, also installed all the op-amp circuitry, I mean there's not a lot here, there's only two op-amps and then some precision resistor, um, so that's us. Uh, I've got a balanced input unbalanced output and we're still controlled by the Arduino here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll set it so there's a uh, zero gain, uh, just a straight through and then we'll connect to the audio analyzer now and have a look at how it behaves. Looking at some of the measurements of this little board then and this is the, the noise floor uh, balanced input and the input is terminated. And the red trace is the noise floor on my previous uh, relay step attenuator uh, and then the blue trace is this electronic attenuator. And so we can see there's about a 10 dB degradation when we move to the electronic uh, uh, version. Um, and that is basically just the laws of nature. You know, once you've got an active uh, device in there, you're going to be generating some noise. Um, and so this is what we this is what we get. Um, no, no surprise. Uh, and so I'm not sorry overly worried about that. Um, whether it even matters, you know, I, I suspect that the noise floor in any source is probably going to be higher than this, and so you're just not going to, it's not going to be uh, relevant at all, really. What we could think about doing is having a sort of hybrid uh, structure where we use the electronic attenuator and then maybe have a, a 10 dB uh, relay uh, attenuator for the last step. And uh, so only, only at maximum volume would you, would you have this extra bit of noise floor. But we'll see how this goes. Uh, looking at the distortion then, there's nothing really to be worried about here. We've got exceptionally good distortion, 2 volts RMS on the input, so no problems there. Um, and a input range, you know, we, we do start to clip quite early, so if I go up to 2.4 volts then our distortion's shifting up. 
uh, and if I go to 2.5 it gets ridiculous. So we don't have a lot of overhead there and uh, potentially we might sort of put a 3dB attenuator after our op amps and before this device just to give us a bit more headroom. But uh, perfectly workable. Um, flatness, exceptionally good here. Um, uh, you know, less than 0 0.005 dB over, over the whole 20k there, so uh, no worries. And then the last one I've done here is common mode rejection. And uh, I, I use the circuit here I've used before, and not, not just the circuit, but how it's implemented, how it's laid out and all the rest of it. Um, and so we get very, very good um, a common mode rejection, even without any uh, adjustment. Um, so we can see minus 80 dB there all the way up to beyond the kilohertz, and then at 20k we're in minus 70, so quite happy with that. So th these results are in a good enough place to be moving on, and uh, let's go and look at what we're going to do next. Okay, so we're, we're reasonably happy with how this thing's behaving now, and we need to start to think about how we're going to present this. Uh, you know, it's got to go in some sort of enclosure. We're going to have to still uh, have our remote control, so we need our infrared infrared receiver connected up to our uh, Arduino. Uh, and then, how are we how are we going to display the attenuation state? You know, we used one of these uh, two by sixteen displays in the past uh, for my previous generation attenuator. Uh, what we're going to do this time is use one of these. Uh, uh, TFT displays. These are actually touch screens, but I'm not. I'm not going to use the touch screen uh, feature. We'll just uh, uh, nice big display. We should be able to see that from the other side of the room, kind of thing. So uh, never used one of these before, but uh, plenty of instructions on on the online. Um, so we'll connect that up to our Arduino and uh, have a play with that. And see how we get on. Here we are back after some time. Then and our display is connected up here. But I'm actually connected to a ESP32 uh, controller here. Uh, I had to move to the ESP32. The Arduino was running out of memory uh, and basically a bit slow uh, driving the display. You know, when we were trying to make changes on the display, it was just a bit on the slow side. And uh, some of the libraries that we need here for the display and the infrared and the like just. Uh, pushing the memory capacity the, of the Arduino Nano there. So anyway, we're up and running here. Also got our infrared detector in there. Uh, and my code's up and running. So let's say, let's just put some power on this and we'll see what we've got. And we power up, power up in the, the last state. I'm using an interrupt line here to, to uh, uh, record the last state. Just using a push button right now, but in, in the final solution, that will be when the power supply starts to fail, we'll trigger that interrupt and we should have enough time to write to the EEPROM what our last state was. Um, so that's fine. Uh, and we're, we're connected to our attenuator module, obviously, and I've got a test signal going in. And if I turn on my DMM, we can see the volts there and let us just... Uh, you can see our remote controls obviously working here, um, and we're going between uh, plus six and minus seventy. Um, but let's just set to zero dB there, and if we on our DMM go for dBV, and we uh, do a zero there, then we've got zero dB and zero dB. And if I change my attenuation here on the on the a attenuator we should track and as you can see there we've got minus 10 and minus 9.95 and uh, on it goes there's uh, minus 20 uh, and so that's quite good uh, we've also I've also implemented a mute function uh, which takes us all the way down we're showing minus 45 here on the DMM, but that's just the noise floor of the DMM. Uh, reality is it's a lot lower than that. Um, but we're all working. Um, and so the next thing we need to think about is, uh, obviously, this is a bit of a mess, all this stuff here. And we need to look at putting that in some kind of enclosure. And this is the same enclosure I've used before with the previous units. This is some X-Test equipment. And uh, this is the last one I've got of these. So we'll take that apart 
and uh, we'll spray it black and we'll put our put our perspex on the front and we'll start to install some of this stuff inside and smarten it up a bit. All right, another another bunch of time later, and we've uh, sprayed this enclosure, so it's nice uh, nice black finish on it now. And uh, I've got a bit of old scrap copper clad board there that we've put our uh, circuitry on. Um, so I've got a socket for the ESP32, and then this guy is just a buffer for the two uh, step attenuators um, for the digital stuff going to that. I've got some op amp circuitry here for driving some of the analog inputs on the ESP32 power supply, obviously. And then there's uh, we've got an AC detect circuit here, and that's what we use to trigger the interrupt on the ESP32. And when the when the when you switch power off, um, that will immediately trigger an interrupt before the the main reservoir is discharged. And so you can write the last state to your EEPROM, and then when you when you power up, it can just power up in that state. Um, so that's fine. Got a little bracket here for a, a, a display, and that's all in place. So uh, we'll screw this together and just let's look at the final uh, solution. Here's the the final controller unit. Then uh, all all sprayed black, looking looking quite nice. There with the bezels and everything on it. Uh, now if we look at the back, uh, so we've got our two 9-pin Ds that go off to the the uh, two step attenuators, mains in, and then the, the antenna for the ESP32 is poking out the back here. Uh, the back is plastic actually, so I didn't, need, didn't really need to do that. Um, and the back's plastic deliberately so that we've not got a ground connection between these... Uh, a, a nine pin D types that uh, would then potentially cause us issues when we connect to individual amplifiers. Um, so there we are. Uh, let's say uh, just put some power on it now. We'll see what it looks like from the from the front panel. Here we are powered up then, and uh, quite a nice uh, crisp display. Um, and of course we can we can change all that. Can change the colours and all the rest of it, uh, the sizes and the uh, and the intensity, all that kind of stuff. Um, um, we've got a bunch of uh, free space here as well that we can put some other stuff in so we've got some uses for that in mind that we'll we'll uh, talk about in a wee while. Uh, we can see our infrared detector there for our remote control and if we uh, vary the remote control there the numbers are changing quite uh, happily so that's all good. Um, so right we need a we really need an application now for this uh, and uh, so let's go and look at look at uh, our first application for this uh, controller. All right, so this is uh, what we've been working up to really. Then we've got our, our valve power amplifiers back on the bench here, and I've got one of my attenuator modules in each of these, and then our controllers all connected up, shown in the middle here. And we mentioned previously about the extra extra space on that display we could potentially do stuff with. And, uh, you know, because these microcontrollers have got a bunch of analog to digital converters on them, we can then use that to monitor the bias on each of our four valves. And we can see the levels here. I've just got about 60 milliamps in each valve. Um, and so it just gives you a sort of visual health indication that everything's in the right place. And you could maybe even use that for adjustments and the like. But just kind of comforting to, to be able to see that things are in the, you know, where you, where you expect them to be. And then the other thing is that because we're using this ESP32, it's got uh, Wi-Fi capability. So you can connect that to your your uh, internet. And then we can have a little app here. I've got a little Blink application here. Uh, and that then uh, allows me to vary my volume just using my phone. Uh, and obviously we can do that from wherever we are. And the other thing is I can, again, I've got real-time monitoring of my a bias here uh, on the display here real time as well. Um, so that is maybe something I'm no, <laughs> I'll no particularly use, but uh, just given we're using the ESP32, this is just a, another little capability. Uh, and you know, uh, here we are with uh, valve amplifiers connected to the internet. So that's quite uh, quite amusing in some ways. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, let's say uh, have a listen. Now we'll see uh, see how this is behaving.